Well, I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome our next guest. She's an award-winning American singer who released her first album, aged 13, and has made her name singing classic country songs and inspirational music. An amazing 40 million albums later, her career is clearly going from strength to strength, and we're delighted to have her with us. She's flown across the pond specially. Please give a very warm welcome to Leanne Rhymes. Welcome to the UK. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming all this way to sing for us. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I love That's here. dedication, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I love it. You've had a phenomenal year. Uh, well, every year is phenomenal. Uh, what have been some of the highlights? Oh my gosh, the highlights of my life. Well, no, just this year. This, just this year? Well, I got married this year. Oh, well, that, that was, was a highlight. That was good, yes, right? When you were growing up in America, was there anything like Songs of Praise on TV? Um, not really. I mean, we had like, you know, Nashville, we had like the uh, Sundays at the Grand Ole Opry and things like that, but nothing like this on TV. This is truly unique. Absolutely. And, and you're well known for singing your inspirational pieces of music. How do you feel when you're up on a platform like this performing in front of thousands? Um, I guess I've been doing it since I was a baby, so this is kind of, it feels like second nature to me. It feels, I think this is where I'm the most comfortable is always on stage. I do you feel it. it's a spiritual experience? Oh, absolutely. I feel like I... I'm the most open and giving and, you know, um, at my most vulnerable also, you know, when you're up on stage in front of millions. So what are you going to sing for us? I'm going to sing my new single, which is called Give. And what's it all about? Um, give it, it's about giving. <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, really the, I think that when we, th when we think of giving in this world, sometimes we think that we always have to give with money and donate to charities, but I think what we, what we forget is sometimes that we're here to, as human beings, to give to one another of ourselves. And I think that's really what the message of this song is. Well, we're delighted. We're delighted you're here. Thank you Thank very you, much. Leanne. Uh, we can't wait to hear the song. Singing Give, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Leanne Rimes. Everybody's reaching for something Every day pulling and tugging And always wanting a little more Holding on a hurt like an anchor Treating those we love like strangers Taking names and keeping score
the legendary Leon Rimes and her guitarist Gregory. Well, it's time to get the Ali Pali rocking. Yes, you heard me right. We've got a fabulous gospel song coming up, and to sing it, our members of the London Community Gospel Choir. Great to have you with us, guys. Along with our next guest, well known for her soul music. She's even received an MBE from the Queen. She must be doing something right. Please welcome Beverly Knight. You love a crowd like this, don't you? Oh, this is my kind of crowd. Vast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're known as the Queen of Soul, but I want to take you right back, okay, to when you were a child, because it was all about gospel and church, and a lot of both. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, and I'm glad for it, because I believe that, um, certainly musically, um, as well as everything else, it kind of put me in the right path. I think... Um, when you, when you go into a church and um, you're asked to sing a song, it's not just all about you and your voice and, 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 and all of that. You're, it's about delivering a message. And um, that is the one thing that I'd say that um, singing in church really, really drums home into you. When you were a small kid in church and you, yeah. you listened to all those great singers, your mum included, she used to sing quite a bit, didn't she, in church? Yes, she did. She did. <laughs> And she's here this evening as well. Great she is, she's along. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel when you were there as a little one? Do you think to yourself, I want to do that one day? Oh, I was ready. I was, I was ready out my seat. <laughs> I was like, come on, it's my turn now. It's my turn. Oh, I absolutely wanted to do that so much. And it wasn't just kind of the, 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 um, the idea of just being in, an, in front of a crowd. It was the, just the joy of singing and really um, bringing over a message. Just, I loved it. How do you feel when you're on a platform like this and you're singing a, a, either a soul song or a gospel song? Uh, well, there's, a, there's a, a, not much of a difference, to be perfectly honest, um, because, again, it, it is um, using your voice as a, as a, as a vessel to, to communicate something. It is, I don't know, it's, it's like the most heightened emotion you can ever feel. It, it just, you know all about that. You know, it just totally elevates you into a whole nother plane. It edifies you and hopefully it edifies the audience as well. What are you going to sing and why? I and the lovely choir, uh, we're going to sing um, a song called I'm Not Forgotten by gospel artist Israel Horton. And um, the reason I wanted to sing this song is because uh, just over a year ago, um, I lost my father, and um, I always turn to music as a solace, as somewhere to hide, you know? And this song literally got myself and my family through that tough time. Thank you very much. Let's hear it. Beverly Knight and the London Community Gospel Choir with I Am Not Forgotten.
very fine old hymn written in 1905 and in the last few years revived by worship leader and songwriter Chris Tomlin, who's given it a new twist. It's become popular in many churches, and if you don't know it, you'll soon pick up the catchy chorus. It's another showstopper now in quite a different way. This is a hymn that's often sung on great occasions in church, yes, but also to mark major sporting events or meetings of organisations, including the Women's Institute and party political conferences. Catherine Jenkins leads us in the words of William Blake's inspired poem.
Now, what promises to be yet another high point in our 50th birthday celebrations with his personal interpretation of one of the most famous and best loved spiritual songs ever written. It's Andrea Bocelli.
Our next hymn has words written by the prolific hymn writer Fanny Crosby, but it wasn't popular when it first appeared in the 1870s. It wasn't until it was revived by Billy Graham in 1954 as part of his London crusade that its potential was realised. It's also become a firm favourite with the millions who watch Songs of Praise every week. So let's raise the roof with To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Hath Done. We're almost at the end of our special 50th birthday celebration. Thank you very much for joining us and singing along. It means a tremendous amount to all of us here on the program that you join us every week. So keep doing it, okay? We start our 51st year next week with a visit to Salisbury, where I meet some of the residents fortunate enough to live in the beautiful Cathedral Close, though I discover that one of the inhabitants is pretty tricky to find, and there'll be more wonderful hymns from a congregation in full voice in the Cathedral, one of the world's most stunning church buildings. Once again, please thank our special guests, Catherine Jenkins, Beverly Knight, Leanne Rhymes, and Andrea Bocelli. And with them, Pam Rhodes, Sam Magnuson, and Diane Louise Jordan. One more thing before we go. It wouldn't be a birthday without singing one special song, so let's all sing this together. Many thanks for celebrating with us. Here's to the next 50 years. Goodbye for now.
the Songs of Praise heads into its next half century, 5.25 next Sunday here on BBC One. The news coming next and later, the Antiques Roadshow from Dorset at 8.00.